Today's Advancing Oceanside podcast is sponsored by Front Wave Credit Union. Front Wave Credit Union fights for their members, those dedicated to country and community, family and friends, for banking, lending, saving, planning, dream big. They got you. They're Front Wave Credit Union, and they've been making financial dreams come true since 1952. Check them out at frontwavecu.com. Hello and welcome to the Advancing Oceanside podcast. I'm your host. My name is Scott Ashton. I'm the CEO of the Oceanside Chamber of Commerce. And today we are excited to have with us Christy Hawthorne. Um, Christy is the president of the Oceanside Historical Society. Along with that, uh, Christy and I have worked together at the Oceanside Chamber for almost 10 years. So I know her very well, but many of you don't. So we wanna give you a chance to meet Christy today and learn about the great work that she does with the Oceanside Historical Society. So welcome Christy and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, Scott. Talking about my favorite subject, Oceanside. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so we are going to talk about the Historical Society, but I know people are interested in knowing about you. How, how did you get to what brought you to Oceanside and what, what sparked your interest in history? Well, I'm a military transplant. Um, my husband was in the Marine Corps. Uh, we arrived in Oceanside in 1983. Um, um, I came originally from Kansas. And I was un very unsure of living in California, especially uh, Oceanside, but um, I actually just grew to love it. And uh, when I got involved in volunteering, uh, that's really when um, my love for Oceanside really, really started. And I, then I wanted really to know more about the city that I lived in. Okay. No, and it, your your passion and your love for Oceanside shows and everything you do. So there's Thank there's you. no doubt that it's genuine. So tell us a little bit about the Historical Society. How long, when were they founded? How long have they been helping um, preserve the, the history of our community? Yeah, there have been a couple of historical societies that predated us, um, but uh, the his current historical society uh, was formed in 1985 uh, by a group of longtime residents. Uh, they met at the uh, First Methodist Church in Oceanside, and uh, Oceanside was getting ready to celebrate its centennial. It was just uh, like three years away, and I really think that that group was formed because they realized uh, what a momentous uh, uh, you know, event that was going to be, and they wanted to start preserving the history and collecting it at that time. Okay, all right. So what are, what are a few of the topics that people are most interested in when they either stop in and visit the Historical Society or, or they call you? You know, most people are interested in the history of the pier. Um, you know, most people are fascinated with the pier. Uh, they'll hear, hear stories about the pier where maybe the first one was located because Oceanside has had six piers. So that really captivates a lot of people. So people are coming to learn about uh, the history of some of the buildings at times. Um, some people are moving into um, a neighborhood and they want to know the history of their neighborhood. Um, so it kind of runs the gamut. But I, again, um, uh, if you were a visitor from Oceanside, you're wanting to know maybe um, about historic buildings such as the mission out in the San Luis Rey Valley. And, um, but mo most people really, really love that pier history as do I. Okay, so just a follow up question on the pier. Um, there is a myth about the, the names that are carved onto the railings at the pier. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about that and what, what the <laughs> yeah. actual truth is? Yeah, so a lot of people think that, um, you know, the names that are carved out on the pier help to finance the pier. Um, and and uh, so you were owning a piece of the pier. And so if you uh, had your name carved on there that you helped to, again, you know, uh, fund the pier. And actually what that was all about was, again, uh, there was, uh, Oceanside was getting ready to turn 100 years old. There was also a centennial committee that was formed. And in order to fund the centennial committee's uh, plans, uh, a parade, uh, special fireworks, a centennial house, they decided to sell pieces of the pier uh, and for I think it was for $50 you could get your name carved uh, or your family name and, and have it put out on the pier. So the funds of, of, uh, that went out on the pier, excuse me, the funds from that uh, actually went into the Centennial uh, Foundation Fund uh, 
and, and not to the city or not to build the pier. Um, but it's a, it's a common misconception, but it, it's, it is always kind of fun to clear that up at the same time. And that's one of the things I like to do is just give people information. Yeah, and I have personally heard you clear that up more than once. That's probably <laughs> like a weekly occurrence to have right. to set people straight on, on that. Um, so tell me a little bit about your, your downtown history walks. I think nearly for three decades, I lose track of time. We've been doing downtown history walks. And I know that we can't do them now during COVID, but um, as soon as we're able, we want to resume. Uh, our downtown history walks are held um, April, through the month of September. We hold them once a month on the second Saturday of each month. And we meet at the uh, Civic Center Fountain at nine o'clock, walks are free. Um, it, it, it always amazes me that we've been doing them for this long and we never fail to raise a crowd or a group that's interested. Um, some people, you know, um, they, they've done the, the walk several times, more than once, more than twice. Uh, they'll have family visiting them and they'll say, hey, there's a fun history walk or friends. And, and uh, so we, this is, um, you know, something that John Daly and I, who's our vice president, he and I switch off on doing these downtown history walks. Um, this is in front of the uh, Museum of Art building, which used to be Oceanside's very first city hall. It's an Irving Gill building. It's one of the many, many stops. So on the walk, we talk about architecture. We talk about um, historic buildings, homes, uh, events that might have taken place at a certain location. And the walks are two hours. Um, we do walk all over downtown Oceanside. We walk through neighborhoods. We go down to the Oceanside Pier and then come back up again. So it really runs a, a wide gamut. But if, if people are unable because of COVID right now, uh, they can't do their walk. If, if uh, people can go on our website and they can actually download a PDF of the, um, the walk and they can do their own guided uh, walk if they'd like or unguided walk, I guess I should say. So there's a little map and then there's an explanation of the ho houses and buildings. Some of those um, um, are not on there, but a good portion of them are on this map. So people can do their own walk. Great. So uh, that's just an amazing service that you and John have provided for the community to give people an opportunity to get out, enjoy the fresh air, and learn about the history of, of, of their city. So Absolutely. thank you for the work that you've been doing on that. Um, just what are some of the notable buildings um, in downtown? You know, we see some photos here. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So one of, one of the most popular buildings is uh, what I, I refer to as the Bunker House. Um, uh, many might remember, long time residents might remember it as the Traveler's Hotel. Uh, but this is a two story brick building built in, the, in about 1886. It is on the corner of Cleveland and Civic Center Drive. Uh, the Bunkers built it, um, uh, Theodore Bunker, and it was a boarding house. Uh, next door was his meat market. Now this building has survived um, over the years. Um, it, um, it's one of those ones that could have been maybe torn down and, and made in, uh, into a block of row houses. Uh, but the owner saw fit to, to keep it, which is great for Oceanside. It, it adds a lot of charm and character. Uh, the building had many uses over the years. Uh, it was a meeting hall for the First Baptist Church. It was a record store. Um, and again, it's been kind of a boarding house over the years. And most recently, it was used as a, as a day spa. Um, another one um, that people will hardly recognize now, um, this is the um, corner of, of Mission and Hill or Mission and Coast Highway. Now, many of you are you're watching, this is where Swami's Cafe is now. It was built in 1928 as the Bank of Italy and Bank of Italy went on to become Bank of Americas. Um, so these buildings that you're looking at are still currently standing. Uh, the exteriors have just radically changed. And I'd also like to point out the really cool um, uh, street signal, if you will, in the center of the um, intersection. That was Oceanside's only traffic light. Uh, it didn't really do anything except blink red off and on, and then it gave directions uh, to Los Angeles or Mission San Luis Rey, and they ended up having to take it down because cars ran into it instead of paying attention. <laughs> so then another um, cool building would be um, 
the downtown fire station on uh, Pierview Way in Nevada. Uh, this is uh, still a working fire station built in 1929. It was designed by uh, renowned architect Irving Gill. Uh, this building has also changed quite dramatically uh, in order to accommodate um, the, the fire trucks, which grow larger and larger. The first National Bank building was built in 1925. Um, many people might remember it as T-Shirt Mart. <laughs> now I think it houses a Verizon um, uh, store, uh, but this building again, uh, it's very modern looking back in the 1920s, just this square shape. Uh, it later became a five and dime after the, uh, the bank was closed during the depression years. I think I got at least one more, maybe two. Uh, this building was, um, the, um, this building is on Civic Center Drive uh, next to the Civic Center here in Oceanside. And it was built in 1888 as the um, uh, Oceanside Baptist Church. Uh, and it went through many uses. One of them was actually a, a mortuary. And this photo was taken in the 1960s. This building is still standing. Currently, it's owned by the city of Oceanside. Um, this is another view. Uh, I think I talked about the City Hall uh, during our history walk, uh, but this is a view of the City Hall and the Public Library. Again, this is also an Irving Gale building. I think great. that's it for my slide. So. <laughs> yeah, great, great photos. Thank you for sharing. And uh, back in 2012 and 2013, you and I worked together on the Oceanside's 125th anniversary in the magazine. So. I get to see a lot of these great photos. Um, so along those lines, um, for people that aren't able to go on your on your history walks, um, how can they learn more about the history of Oceanside? Well, we have a really great website, uh, and it's really simple. It's OceansideHistoricalSociety.org. And we have um, a lot of history on, on our, our website. We have a, a timeline. Uh, we have interviews from uh, pioneer residents. We have maps, uh, we have a history of the Oceanside Pier. So we've got a lot of information. And we also sell two of our publications on our website. The other great uh, tool uh, to learn about Oceanside, and we have a very, very active social media presence. Uh, there's uh, three of uh, three of our volunteers that work on it, and we're we're posting something new on Facebook, if not every day, every week. Um, and there's a lot of great photos, a lot of great history uh, on our Facebook and Instagram. Great, great. So um, tell us a little bit about how the society is funded and how people that are interested in supporting your work um, can can join in. Well, um, we are in a, a city, we don't get any funds from the city, but the city is very gracious in allowing us to stay in, in what used to be the original police, uh, police station at 305 North Nevada. Uh, we've been in this location, um, thanks to the city of Oceanside uh, for, uh, and again, I lose track of time being a historian for some reason, uh, uh, nearly 20 years. And um, so we're at that location, but um, we get funded through um, donations uh, from our members and abroad. Uh, we are funded by our membership dues, which are nominal. A, a, a annual membership starts at just $25. We also um, get funding uh, in part from the San Diego County Board of Supervisors. And uh, so uh, we, we are reliant on donations. Also our book sales and uh, our photo sales. So we have one of the largest photo collections in San Diego County. Um, a lot of really great historic photos, some of the ones that you just saw there, uh, and those are for sale, and that's, those are one of the ways uh, that we fund the Historical Society. We have no paid staff, we're all volunteers, so we're all working really hard uh, just to share, preserve, and, and uh, get out the history of Oceanside. Great, um, and I am a member of the Historical Society, and Thank I can you. I can say that the prices uh, to join are very very affordable, <laughs> and I encourage everybody to do it. So, Thank you. Christy, what's the what's the website address once again? Yeah, it's just www.oceansidehistoricalsociety.org. Great. So I encourage everybody to take uh, some time to visit that site to learn more about the history of your community and to learn more about how you can support the Oceanside Historical Society. So Christy, thank you so much for being with us today and just sharing your, your passion for the history of our community. Thanks for giving me the time, I appreciate it. All right, thank you. Uh -huh.